Greetings, friends. I hope this finds you well, healthy, and encouraged. I want to share from a portion of the Gospel of John today, um, chapter 17 specifically, and I'm going to just read verses 15 to 24. This is Jesus in the midst of his prayer to the Father uh, the night before he gave himself to die on the cross. I'm not asking you to take them out of the world, but to keep them safe from Satan's power. They are not part of this world any more than I am. Make them pure and holy through teaching them your words of truth. As you sent me into the world, I am sending them into the world, and I consecrate myself to meet their need for growth in truth and holiness. I'm not praying for these alone, but also for the future believers who will come to me because of the testimony of these. My prayer for all of them is that they will be of one heart and mind, just as you and I are, Father, that just as you and I are just as you are in me and I am in you, so they will be in us and the world will believe you sent me. I have given them the glory you gave me, the glorious unity of being one as we are. I in them and you in me, all being perfected into one so that the world will know that you sent me and will understand that you love them as much as you love me. Father, I want them with me, these you've given me, so that they can see my glory. You gave me the glory because you loved me before the world began. Again, that's part of the prayer that Jesus offered the Father the night before he was crucified. And it strikes me that there are at least four remarkable things regarding us in Jesus' prayer. First, in verse 15, that we would be saved. Jesus prays that we would be saved, that we would be spared from the influence and the impact of the evil one. In fact, a little earlier in that same chapter, it's, it's very clear that Jesus doesn't pray for the world. He prays for those who believe in him. And then in verse 18, Jesus said that he offers himself, that we, both the immediate group that he was with that evening, the 11, but also we who would come to faith afterwards, would be sanctified through him. And then thirdly, the, the notion of solidarity in faith, verses 20 to 23. So not only does Jesus pray that we'd be saved, he prays that in his sending of us, that we would live sanctified or set apart for that very purpose. And then thirdly, that there would be a solidarity in faith, that they and we would be one, one even so far as to include the apostles and the, the current church as we are part of the current church. And then the fourth thing that really, really strikes me is found in verse 24, that Jesus wants us to see his glory, the glory that the heavenly father has given him. He wants us to be with him. And that's our future hope following the resurrection, that we would be together with him in order that we would see his profound glory that the father has bestowed upon him from before the world was even created. You know, the, I think the central thing in this passage that uh, really I wanted to share with you was this notion of solidarity and faith. As, the, uh, as at least some of the restrictions that have been necessary to prevent the, the spread of COVID-19 are being relaxed or eased, uh, we clearly are all looking forward to gathering together as one, whether it be at the EAC campus or the North Avenue campus, uh, but gathering as one for worship, for fellowship, and to simply catch up with one another. 
And indeed, the world over, the church is looking forward to coming together again for worship, for fellowship, and to simply catch up with one another. But let's keep in mind, as we gather, as we gather as one, that our gathering as part of the universal church is a gathering that will enable and equip us to be galvanized for the very mission that Jesus referred to in verse uh, 18, where he said that I am sending them into the world. So I too, along with you, am looking forward with excitement to being able to gather again. But in that gathering, let it be for the purposes of worship, for fellowship, and to be galvanized to mission the mission for which Jesus has sent each and every one of us into the world. God bless. Allow me to pray. Father, this portion of your word, uh, the Gospel of John, is not only encouraging, but exciting. That the Lord Jesus Christ, even today, continues to pray that we, the church, would experience uh, an ecumenism way beyond that which mankind seeks to develop, but that in truth, the universal church would indeed be galvanized for mission. That in our sending and in our being sent by Jesus himself into the world, that you would be glorified, that Jesus would be glorified, and that when the day comes, when we are all gathered in his presence, that we would all, with new eyes, be able to see the glory that you, the Father, are bestowing on the Son, in whose name we pray. Amen. God bless.